Anyone bring a spare too? Yeah. Oh, no. No? I left it in the drawer. If anyone did, have a chat with my wife. <laughs> She'll be eternally grateful. Um, well, you, what's that? There's some in the shop. Oh, brilliant. The shop's closed. <laughs> the shop's closed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, excellent. Um, well, this weekend we were meant to be having Webb uh, come and join us from America, but instead you've got the two northerners. Um, so there you go. <laughs> Uh, so I, I'm going to um, kick us off this evening and Michael's going to be <laughs> teaching us tomorrow uh, and then I'll be wrapping up for us on uh, Sunday. Let's, um, let's turn to our Bible. So we're going to open up, we're going to be in the book of Acts this weekend uh, and we're going to start at the beginning because that's a good place to start. So Acts chapter 1 and verses 1 to 15. I'll just read that for us and then um, we're going to watch something on the screen and then I'll come and share some stuff with us. Tonight we'll be brief. Because um, it's Friday night. Um, so, uh, Acts chapter 1, and I'm going to read verses 1 to 15. So this is Luke writing. Luke wrote an account of Jesus' life, and this is like the sequel, the second book, the, the, the rest of the story. And so he says, In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven, after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptised with water, but in a few days you will be baptised with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered round him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill uh, called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. When they arrived, they went upstairs to the room where they were staying. Those present were Peter, John, James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James. They all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. In those days, Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. Now, it's after nine o'clock, so we're going to watch a film trailer, okay? And so, if you haven't yet seen the Bond movie, film, whatever you call it, um, and you want to, <laughs> and you don't want it to be spoiled, then by all means... Cover your ears and eyes. It doesn't bother me. I had to watch it through to check what it was like. So I've kind of spoiled the story for myself. But if you don't want to spoil the story and you want to see the film at the cinemas, then cover your eyes and ears, okay? Because we're going to watch the Bond uh, film trailer, okay? So here goes. Now I'm joining with my enemy. How did that happen? Well, you live long enough. Harder to tell the good from bad, villain from heroes these days. They used to be able to get into a room with the enemy. Now it's just fretting in yourself. <laughs> Did you know about that? In a second. I don't know what this is. Is she one of them? 
and the middle. And her secret finds its way out. Don't leave a death with you. We both eradicate people to make the world a better place. I just want to be a little tidier. I met your new fellow. She's a disarming young woman. You know, I've flown my distance before. No. That's a trailer. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, Marion's not gonna bother. Yeah, well, I'll go with someone else then, Marion. <laughs> That's a trailer, isn't it? It's got all the usual bits and bobs there. And you can see where things are going with Bond and he falls off a bridge with a rope against the usual sort of stuff. And my job tonight um, is to give us a trailer just like that. So it's going to be just as exciting as that. Now, we're going to, I'm going to give you a trailer of where we're going this weekend, okay? Now, the trailer is not a trailer to the whole book of Acts, okay? We're not doing that. It's not even a trailer to part of the book of Acts. But it's a trailer about a little thread that we're going to follow in part of the book of Acts, okay? And the thread that we're going to follow um, this weekend is exactly this. Ordinary Christians doing ordinary evangelism. Okay, that's what this weekend's about. Ordinary Christians doing ordinary evangelism. Now, what's evangelism? Well, evangelism is simply uh, when a Christian speaks the good news about Jesus to a non-Christian who's listening. Okay, that's evangelism. When a Christian speaks the good news about Jesus to a non-Christian who's listening. And there is going to be this weekend action. There's going to be drama. There's going to be adrenaline, there's going to be one earthquake, there's going to be multiple explosions, there's going to be, well, not so many gadgets and uh, car chases and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but uh, what I want to do very briefly this evening is give the game away, just like a trailer, but not too much, okay? I don't want to spoil the whole thing, but I just want to whet our appetites and give the game away a little bit. Uh, so that we can see where we're heading this weekend. So three things, briefly. Um, all good stories have a structure, some characters, and a problem, don't they? You saw that even in the trailer. There's, there's a kind of, there's some, it's heading somewhere, there's some key characters, and there's a problem. Something's going wrong, and it needs sorting out. All the best stories have those three things, and that's what we're going to see very briefly this evening. So the first thing is the plot line, the structure of things, the plot line. Uh, if you've ever heard me teach on the book of Acts, then you'll maybe know where we're going with this already. Uh, but uh, as you saw in chapter one of Acts, the apostles met the risen Jesus, didn't they? So he met with them, and he showed them that he was alive, and he promised them the gift of the Holy Spirit, uh, and they were in Jerusalem. Now, they've got some funny ideas about uh, God's kingdom and about how God was going to do everything. And Jesus sets them right. And as Luke records that in chapter 1, verse 8, as Luke records Jesus, what Luke does is he gives away the structure of the whole of the book of Acts. So chapter 1, verse 8, take a look. Jesus is responding to these apostles. They're a bit confused. And he says, chapter 1, verse 8, 
But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Now that's the plot line. That's the structure. That's the story. That's the book of Acts. That they go and they speak about Jesus first in Jerusalem, then in Judea and Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. That's how the book works, okay? But who's going to do this? Now, that's what's going to happen. Who's going to do this? Well, God is. God is. You saw that just before verse 8, verse 7. The Father, he set the times. It's all under his authority. The Son, Jesus, it's by his power. And What does he call them? Anyone notice? What does he call them in verse 8? It says, you will be witnesses. witnesses. You will be... What does he say just before that word? My, My witnesses. That's right. Yeah, so they're not to go off just... Uh, so sort of willy-nilly doing as they please. No, Jesus said, look, you're my witnesses. And I'm going to give you the power that you need to go to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. And the Holy Spirit is the, the, the one who's going to give them that power. So you see, God is going to do this. God is going to take them and use them in those different places to spread his word to the ends of the earth. But through who? Through who? How's God going to do it? Well, the apostles, isn't it? That's who Jesus is talking to there, right? His, his key leaders, 11 of them, he's talking to them. They're the ones, aren't they? Uh, if you look at the book of Acts, as you read on, uh, particularly Peter and Paul loom large in the story. They're key characters in the story, and that's true. But there's a bit more to it than that. Because... Behind those big characters, the apostles and Peter and Paul and all of these big names, behind them and around them, and actually even without them, there's a whole army of ordinary Christians in the book of Acts. There's a whole army of them, and they're going out and they're speaking about Jesus. And that leads us to the second thing, that the people, we need to meet the characters, don't we? Uh, the, 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 the Jesus ascends into heaven, we saw that in the reading, and then the apostles go back to Jerusalem in verse 13. Uh, and they go back and, uh, well, all the usual characters are there, aren't they? There's nothing strange, is there? Verse 13, Peter, John, James, Andrew, these are just the, the Jesus' key apostles uh, and leaders. But they join in verse 14 with some other people, don't they? Verse 14, they all joined together constantly in prayer along with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So you see right there in that verse, yeah, you've got the apostles there. But what you're starting to see is some ordinary Christians, not apostles, just ordinary Christians getting involved in this work of evangelism. Um, the women who were there? Who were these women? It just says the, the women. Who, who were they? Well, these were the women that went around with Jesus during his ministry and they supported him. They, 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 they practically helped him and they financially backed his ministry. They supported him in his ministry. And there's two pictures out there just outside the door, just out there. Beautiful pictures. Look at them as you go out. There's one of uh, the cross and there's another one of the empty tomb. And these women had been witnesses to the cross and resurrection of Jesus. So they're there. And, uh, well, you might say, well, you know, I mean, they're quite special, aren't they? They were around for the whole of Jesus' ministry. They saw him die. They saw him uh, rise again. They saw the risen Jesus. Uh, and the other characters here, well, they're the apostles. And they're Jesus' family, aren't they? I mean, it's his mum <laughs> and his brothers. So they're kind of special characters. I don't think you can really claim, Rich, that they're ordinary Christians, ordinary disciples. Well, okay, let's go with that. Uh, but then let's look at verse 15. Because in verse 15 it says, In those days Peter stood up among the believers, a group numbering about 120. 
So you see, in that group of 120, okay, yeah, yeah, there were the apostles, and yeah, we can't really count Jesus' mum and brothers. They were quite special. But there must have been some ordinary Christians in that group. 120 people, the Jerusalem church, and it's got some ordinary Christians in it. People like you and me. They're not apostles, not Jesus' mum or his brothers. They're ordinary Christians. But then... The story goes on, doesn't it, into the next chapter. Acts chapter 2, there's this explosion, isn't there? It's called Pentecost. It's that great day. There was this great crowd gathered together. We're told in chapter 2 that there were Parthians, Medes, Elamites, uh, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, uh, parts of Libya, People from Rome, Cretans, Arabs, there were all sorts of people gathered together in Jerusalem for Pentecost. And Peter spoke to this massive crowd of people. And what's the upshot? Chapter 2, verse 41. Those who accepted his message were baptised, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Now those people who heard the message and turned to the Lord Jesus and joined the Jerusalem church, they were ordinary Christians. Yeah? 3,000 of them. They're not apostles. They're not Jesus' mum. They're not Jesus' brother. No, these are ordinary Christians. The Jerusalem church is filling up with just plain old ordinary Christians. Now, you might say to me, oh, well, Rich, you know, it was a big day, wasn't it? You know, there was quite a lot of fuss. It was quite an exciting day. It's Pentecost, you know. Peter was there, the apostles. But it was a big thing, you know. Can we really count these people as ordinary Christians? Well, Acts chapter 2, verse 47, just after that moment. The end of Acts chapter 2, verse 47. And the Lord added to their number daily... Those who were being saved. So, okay, we'll discount those people, say they were special. But now, on a daily basis, drip, 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 there are ordinary people becoming ordinary Christians. The Jerusalem church is filling up with ordinary Christians. And then a load of trouble kicks off. Michael will talk more about this tomorrow. But a load of trouble kicks off. And chapter 4, verse 4, in the midst of all of that, we read, But many who heard the message believed, so the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. Do you see, this Jerusalem church is growing and it's filling up with ordinary Christians. Describe that church to me. Imagine that you were there, you know, in all the hustle and bustle of Jerusalem. Imagine you were there. What, what is that church like? That Jerusalem church is a big church, isn't it? It is a growing church. It's a hustling and bustling church, a bit like Jerusalem all around. And yes, the apostles are there. And yes, Mary's there and Jesus' brothers are there. But it's full of ordinary, everyday, run-of-the-mill Christians. And these are the people that we're going to follow and that we're going to learn from this weekend. But we need to see the problem, don't we? Because we've got a story, we've got a structure, we've got a plot line, we've got some characters, but we need a problem. And there is one, it's the pressure, isn't it? Because as we close, uh, in these early chapters of Acts, there's pressure. The church is growing, growing, growing. But the pressure... Is building, building, building. Sometimes you get thirsty, don't you? And maybe not so much the kids, but the adults. You get thirsty, you think, oh, I'll put a brew on. Yeah, and you go go to the kettle, I'll put a brew on. Maybe there's a few of you there, and so, you you know, you fill it up, you put a fair bit of water in there, you put the kettle on, and then you maybe, you know, you're sort of doing things in the kitchen or you're chatting or whatever, and you're not really aware of it. We don't pay much attention most of the time, but the kettle just starts to... You know, just, you can hear it a little bit. Or, you know, something's, it's, something's going on. You don't notice it and you carry on doing bits and pieces. And as time goes on, whatever, it starts to make a bit more noise, doesn't it? You can feel the, 
you can sort of, you don't notice it because you're normally doing other things, but that's what's happening. The pressure's building, isn't it? And it's building, and it's building, and if it's anything like my kettle, as it gets towards the end, it's like, <laughs> it's all over the place, and there's steam coming out, and, and the pressure is rising and rising and rising as the water boils, and that's what's happening in this church here. In these early chapters of Acts, the pressure on this church is building and building. There's external pressure, there's persecution. There's opposition. People are getting arrested, as we'll see. And there's internal pressure as well. There are issues of purity and integrity within the church. There's church discipline and there's just growing pains. The church is growing and growing and growing. And the people are kind of trying to find a way to cope with that growth and to put structures in place to to deal with everything that's happening. The pressure is building. What is God going to do? With the Jerusalem church. With this church that's growing. With this church full of ordinary Christians. With this church that's under pressure. Now this weekend we're going to forget the apostles. All right, forget Peter and Paul. Forget all the big name characters. What is God going to do with these ordinary Christians? How are these ordinary Christians going to get on with the job and do evangelism? And how will we do that too? You have to come back tomorrow morning to find out. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we do want to commit this weekend into your hands. Father, we we long to learn how to make you known, how to talk to people about Jesus. Because we love the Lord Jesus and we want people to come to know him. But Father, we readily recognise that we are very ordinary. And so Father, we do need your help. And we pray this weekend as we uh, look at these ordinary Christians and see what they did and see how you work through them. Father, we pray that you would teach us, that you would instruct us and that you would equip us so that we can be his witnesses, wherever you place us, and to the ends of the earth. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.